Okay, wishing everybody um, a wonderful Sukkot. So if you're celebrating the holiday of Sukkot, I hope it's going well for everybody. Um, I have a few ideas that I want to pull together for the end as we come, so we approach, so we're in the middle of the holiday, but as we approach the end of the holiday and um, as we come to the last days, which will be this Friday night Shabbat and Shabbat, which is um, Shemini Yatzeres and Simchas Torah, the, the two last days of the holiday coming up. So what I'm going to try to do is pull together various ideas that all accumulate at this time. The end of the holiday of Sukkot, the last Torah portion that we read, which we read um, this coming Shabbat, the, the, or this coming Simchat Torah, as we end the Torah, we read the Torah portion called Vezot Habracha, and the Megillah that we read, which is the Megillah of Koheles, which is the Megillah called Ecclesiastes, written by King Solomon. So there's a lot coming together and a lot I want to pull together and bring some kind of underlying thread that goes to all three of them. So I'm going to pull together Sukkot. I'm going to pull together Vizos HaBracha, which is the last Torah portion of the Torah that we read coming up on Simchat Torah. Before we start all over again with the beginning of Genesis, we just start right into the next beginning all over again. And to bring in the reading of, of the Megillah Kohelet, which was written by King Solomon, one of the five Megillot that we read on the holiday, holiday of Sukkot. So I'd like to start there. I'd like to start with Koheles. Koheles was written by King Solomon. <clears throat> and it starts off talking about, um, translated. it's translated as vanity. It's translated as um, things that have no meaning. Um, King Solomon uses over and over again in the beginning of the book of Koheles. He says, and this is, sorry, wrong, wrong quote. <laughs> he says, the words of Koheles... Futility of futilities, so Koheles. Futility of futilities. All is futile. Five times in the first sentence of the book of Kohelet, we read about futility. But if you if you look at the word in Hebrew, Hevel, it really means breath. It really means um, like a wind. And I'd like to think about that in terms of our neshama, our soul, which is known as the breath of God. It's neshima. It's the breath of God. So if you think about you could translate um, Hevel as, as futility, or you could translate Hevel as breath. And it's all about our breath. It's all about our soul. So let's talk about our soul. And King Solomon, as he's writing Kohelis, is really tackling with the existential meaning of life. What is the purpose of my life? He's fearing death. There's um, a desire to understand the world. And so too, we have a desire to understand the world. Don't we want to understand why we're here, what we're about, what this is all about? And, um, and that's what the book of Kohelet is, is, is pondering and asking, what is this all about? Is it all meaningless? Does it have any value? What is the purpose of our lives? Where are we going? <laughs> what is this journey through life? We're in, well, thank God we're all still alive. If you're watching this, you're still alive. Thank God. And why are we here? What are we supposed to accomplish? What's the meaning and purpose of our lives? And that's what Kohelet is asking. What's the point? Where's their meaning in my life? Now I want to switch to the Zosha Bracha, which is the last Torah portion we read. And in it, we read about the death of Moses, our, our leader, our our, our prophet, the one who took the Jewish people, you know, uh, he was the mouthpiece for God, bringing the Jewish people out of Egypt, being their leader, being the mouthpiece for God, going up into the heavens, talking to God, having an intimate face-to-face -face relationship to God. And this is his end. This is the last of his uh, words to the Jewish people. He blesses the Jewish people. And in the Medrash, it teaches us that Moses asks forgiveness from the Jewish people. He asks forgiveness. He has been their love, their leader, their shepherd, their everything. And he's turning to them and he's saying, forgive me for if I hurt you. And in the Medrash, we learn that the people asked him for forgiveness. There's a, there's, a, there's a coming together of Moses with the Jewish people. They're each forgiving each other. They're asking for um, the, the, as he's moving into the next world, as he's being released, as his soul is leaving his body, Moses wants to end with this sense of unity with the Jewish people and he forgives the people, they forgive him. There's a, there's a unity that happens amongst the Jewish people. How lovely is that before he dies? And, um, and what does he leave behind? He leaves behind work well done. He leaves behind a, a purpose. He, his purpose was to be the mouthpiece. His purpose was to help bring the Jewish people out of Egypt. Obviously, very big, you know, Moses like no other prophet. 
But each one of us has a reason why we're here. Each one of us is being brought it back to life every morning when we wake up. Each one of us has a breath of God being breathed into us. So each one of us has a unique role to play. And when we line ourselves up, when we connect ourselves to God, to purpose, to meaning, to each other, to being like God and bringing light into the world, when we do goodness, when we do kindness, then we're happy. We're happy. And uh, the holiday of Sukkot is called the holiday of happiness. It's a holiday we're enjoined, we're asked to be happy. How am I going to be happy? I just came out of Rosh Hashanah, I just came out of Yom Kippur, and now I build this temporary structure in my backyard or my wherever it is, or I go into this temporary structure. And the, and the symbolism and the reality is there's no security in this world. There's no security in our houses as people who are having their houses burnt down in California. There's no security in our houses as we're all hiding away from coronavirus. We are we are in, in an insecure world. Where's our security going to come from? It's going to come from a relationship with God. It's going to come from something that's beyond this world. In the book of Kohelis, we read, there's nothing new under the sun. That's right, there's nothing new under the sun, but there might be something new above the sun. Above the sun is the heavenly realms. Above the sun is the source of Torah. It says in our, in our mystical sources that the Torah preceded the creation of the world, whatever that means, but that the foundation for how we lift ourselves out, up out of the mund mundaneness of this world is by connecting ourselves to something much bigger than ourselves, so to connecting ourselves to something transcendent. I heard Rabbi Sachs, describe happiness in two ways. One is a happiness um, that's a linear, straight line happiness that's coming from within. We're trying to create a vessel. We're trying to create ourselves into a receptacle where we will be a conduit for divine light by doing goodness, by being kind. As we learn in the Torah, where at the beginning of the Torah, we learn about Adam and Eve, who when they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they recognized that they were naked and God clothed them. He clothed, God clothed the naked, so too we clothe the naked. At the end of the Torah as we read this coming weekend. We're going to read about God who is the one who buries Moses and there's that's kindness, right? Burying the dead. We have to bury our dead. We don't cremate our dead. We bury our dead. That's the Jewish way. So so too at the beginning of the Torah, God's clothing the naked. So too at the end of the Torah, God's burying the dead. In the middle of the Torah, God is visiting the sick. When he visits Abraham after he has circumcises himself, he visits the sick. All of these ways, when we do those things, when we engage in those activities, we are being godlike. We're visiting the sick. We're clothing the naked. We're burying the dead. We're visiting the mourners. We're doing all these acts of kindness. We're becoming givers. And when we become givers says all of our sources, we become happy. And it's not happy like a happenstance. I happen to come across something that makes me feel good. That's a, a, a happiness that um, isn't a Jewish happiness. It's not just, oh, I happen, happen to be happy. It, there's a simcha that comes. It's a zaman simcha seinu. The root of the word that we are looking to connect ourselves to simcha is, is sham moach. It's in my head. I make myself happy by how I think, how I perceive it. If I think I'm connecting to something bigger than myself, if I understand that I'm part of a much bigger picture than just me, if I'm doing these good things and I'm engaged in something meaningful and purposeful, as Viktor Frankl would say, you know, man's pursuit of meaning, it's all here in our Torah. It's giving us a meaning for life that will bring us to simcha, the simcha that comes from a connection to something meaningful and purposeful. So when I'm engaged in clothing the naked, burying the dead, visiting the sick, visiting the mourner, helping people, being kind to people, being compassionate to people, loving people, connecting people, etc., 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 and I do that, and I have in my mind that I'm connecting to something much bigger than me, it will bring simcha. This is a holiday of Simcha Seinu. So I know I'm limiting myself to 10, 15 minutes. So what I want to add here is what's really, it was a twist for me to learn this, but when we go into our Sukkot, so these little structures that we build, these temporary structures that we built and we build, that we live in essentially, that we sleep in, some of us that we eat in, that we hang out in, and they teach us the fragility of life. They teach us that there's nothing secure 
about the physical world. They, we cannot, as we know, we're in a pandemic, so there's no security here. We don't know what will be next week. We don't know what will be tomorrow. And we go into our little huts, these permanent, per, excuse me, temporary structures. We go out of our permanent homes into a temporary structure. Just like our soul comes into our body, which is a temporary structure, it's a temporary abode. And in that insecurity, in that temporariness comes Simcha, because I'm going to take advantage of it now. Where can I find my bite-sized piece of happiness now? I do believe we have to feel the full gamut of the emotional wealth that our we have the capacity to feel. We can feel really sad about the world and the condition of the world and the pain and suffering that's there. We should be feeling that. And we should also feel the samer, the joy of connection to something much bigger, to something transcendent, and that there's meaning and purpose in our lives. There's meaning and purpose of what happens to us. And as much as we fight what happens to us, maybe we can only, you know, worry about those things that we can change and the things that we can't change, we relax and we go into our sukkah or we go into a, a place of connection to God where I say, in this moment, in this moment, I'm happy. I'm feeling the rich because I'm happy with my lot. I have what I need and I'm doing what I can and I'm connecting to something bigger than myself and I'm going into the sukkah. So I want to just, what I really wanted to say was that the sukkah that we first built when we were coming out of Egypt and we were in the desert, we, the Jewish people, lived in tents. But the sukkah, the tabernacle, was the house we built. The mishkan is the tabernacle that we built for God. So we built a structure to house, so to speak, to bring God's presence into our midst. So too, we bring build a sukkah to bring God's presence, so to speak, into our midst, a place, so to speak, where we can have an intimate encounter with God, where we can sit and be in the shadow of godliness. We're bringing God into our lives, into our space, into our world, and we're connecting. And with that connection comes simcha. So my bracha to all of us is that in the tipsy-topsy world we live in, we recognize that where the security lies is in our faith, is in our families and our friends. That's where we'll find simcha, is in those relationships, family, friends, and God. And we can have a linear kind of relationship where, where there's me and it's coming from me and I'm having a relationship with the divine, I'm having a relationship with the big picture. And then there's a circular a circular connection of I'm circling, like Jewish dancing is circle dancing, right? Because we're all in this together and there's no one that's leading and no one that's in front. Everybody is equidistant and we circle. And on Simchat Torah, we circle our Torah because our Torah is what we value and we circle at the end of days, we're going to be dancing around God, that, so to speak, whatever that means. We're going to be circling what's important and what's important is Torah, what's important is God and what's important is connection. So let's take this time to have a bite-sized moment of happiness where the world's crashing all around us and we're going to feel it in its time. This is the, Kohelas is the, where we read about the time. There's a time for this, there's a time for that, there's a time for life, there's a time for death, there's a time for everything under the sun, there's a time. And this is a time for Simcha, this is a time for taking stock, this is a time for ingathering all our spiritual um, riches that we have accumulated over these last 40, 50 days. Let's, let's, let's bask in that, in that relationship we have formed with God. Let's feel happy in this moment because we don't know what will be. And we wish everybody a Chag Sameach. And as we come into the last days of the holiday, a Shabbat Shalom and a, and a, and a, and a, and a Chag Sameach and a, and a, and a good Yantif.